PSA today from Avery LR32 and the Ultra Ball Sack. Yes, we just said that. Cheating in Yu-Gi-Oh! is wrong. We're going to talk to you today about ways that you can avoid cheating. An interesting ruling that I found about cheating. I can't use an official fucking voice. You're fucking ugly. Get the fuck out of here. Let's get into today's video, shall we? <laughs> That intro creeped you out good because it creeped me out too. Literally, the way that I thought of that is that I hit the camera, started recording, thought for about five seconds I was gonna do, and bada bing, bada boom. That's how you get your little fun ultra ball intro. That's a sexy little son of a bitch. He's annoying though. He's a he's a piece of shit today. But anyway, guys, smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button so that we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers with my luscious locks. Because my hair is long as shit. I should have put my pony, my hair in a ponytail. But anyway, who cares? Guys, let's talk about cheating today. So I was thinking today, as I'm going through life, the universe, things that are interesting in my little sexy world. Um, because my PC's... Hmm. You're, you're a fucking idiot. So I was thinking about life today, the universe, and things that are particularly interesting to me in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I started coming across some very interesting rulings as I was just looking through things today, playtesting for regions and whatnot. And I remembered this from many years ago. And for those of you who don't know, it's about a card called Frozen Soul. So what does Frozen Soul do? Well, it's a trap card that was played in Final Countdown years ago. And what it does is that when you activate it, it skips the opponent's next battle phase. The key word being next. So the ruling with Frozen Soul is that it skips the, in the next initial battle phase that the opponent attempts to enter. Now, if the opponent say they go draw phase, standby, main phase, and go to end phase, and they do not attempt to enter that battle phase that is being hit by Frozen Soul, then the Frozen Soul will roll over. People would use this to their advantage and activate multiple Frozen Souls to skip multiple battle phases turns in advance. So really, it should only skip one when in reality, you were skipping multiple. Now, I don't know if it is still ruled because I couldn't find this online specifically, but years ago when Final Countdown used to be at three and you know people were playing it and stuff like that, that originally Frozen Soul was ruled that if you activate multiple Frozen Souls, then uh, it would skip multiple next battle phases. They wouldn't all clump into the next battle phase. Also, side note, if you're hearing a waterfall outside my window, it's because it's raining like crazy because, I don't know, I guess Konami's taking a piss outside my house. I don't know. I've done a lot to, to shit on them, so maybe they're just pissing on me. Who knows? Or maybe Master Duel is just finally pissing out in the wind. Who knows? But uh, I was looking up just odds and ends rulings about cards and Frozen Soul came up and that's really what inspired this video. And the ruling on Yugipedia says that if you play Frozen Soul, you have to inform the opponent about this ruling that it skips the next battle phase that they attempt to enter. And I started thinking, you know, this would be good for a Yu-Gi-Oh! cheating discussion video because someone who doesn't know rulings, especially on an old ass card like Frozen Soul that's been around since, God, 2005, 2004, um, someone that doesn't know that ruling, they're not going to think of that. So they're just gonna go, oh, okay, main, you know, draw, stand by main, pass turn. Ooh, they just passed turn. They didn't go into battle phase. Oh, you, you can't do it next turn either. And then when they attempt to go to battle phase, you say, ho, ho, no, 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 you don't get your battle phase. So I started thinking like, would this be something like considered cheating? Because if it's fundamentally how the card works, and don't get me wrong, like I'm not trying to like start a buyout of Frozen Soul. No one's going to play fucking Frozen Soul. That card's shit. Um, but if it's a ruling and... It's how the card is intended to function. If you don't tell your opponent about that, whether because you don't know or because you do know, but you want to have the best advantage that you can, is that considered cheating? Now, I want to pose another question to you. 
When I topped with Trickstar back in 2017, near the end of the Zodiac Tier 0 format, I'm the first person to top up pure Trickstar, by the way, because the region I went to is the first one of the season, but I digress. I'm the Trickstar King. I'm just saying all the waifu bitches in the Trickstar archetype bow down to me. I'm just saying I'm still single, though. I need a girlfriend. The Ultra Ball doesn't count. Besides the point, um, people at the time, not a lot of people, at least at this regional, didn't know if they could ash Trickstar Reincarnation. Now, I knew that you could ash Trickstar Reincarnation, but... I didn't want to tell my opponents that. And so I thought to myself, well, if they don't know how the card works, I don't want to give them information that technically they don't have to know. And so I would always just say, um, I'm not sure you need to call a judge. And you have to keep in mind too, that at competitive events, especially now with like the, the updated policy documents and things, there are certain things that judges can and cannot do. Um, for example, like, you know, if you're about to activate a Gozen match and you don't know if you can for whatever reason, the judge can't come over if you call him over and you you can't ask, can I play this card? Because it's not public knowledge that that is considered coaching. But if the Gozen match is already face up and it can't be played, then you call a judge over and then the judge says, yeah, you can't play the Gozen match because of X, Y, Z reason. So it, it's, it, I feel like it's a really fine line that you have to kind of travel with not just frozen soul or trickster reincarnation but just a lot of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. um you know we see ruling nightmares with cards like mischief of the time goddess that skip an entire phase to get you to your battle phase or skip like an entire turn to get you to your next battle phase and it's it's really weird how things like that work or like pyro clock of destiny that skips the turn count forward by one or two whatever um and so trying to figure out how you skip two turns in the future, but then all these phases and things occur, it's really weird. And so I wanted to pose the question to you that do you feel that if players do things like this, that you consider it cheating? Obviously, you have things like stacking and rule sharking and things like that that are obviously illegal. But it just got me wondering, like, you know, we have so many cards in Yu-Gi-Oh!, that obviously not everybody's going to know every single ruling to every single card. Um, I mean, I remember years ago, I think this is still even on Konami's new shitty looking website because they destroyed how it looked originally and it was fine before, but anyway. Um, they had for years a rivalry versus goes and match Q&A on their official page because it came up so much because rivalry and goes and have been played for years in multiple different formats. And so... I have never tried to cheat anybody. Um, I will say one funny story about this because this was at a local OCS <laughs> years ago. Big Bruce 94, oh, bruh, yeah, feel free to roast me in the comments, pimp. <laughs> so uh, let, I'll, I'll leave you with this story before I end the video. So I was maybe 14, 15 years old. This is Infernity format, like 2010. Derek, I know that you know where this is going, pimp. <laughs> and... Back in that time, a way that you could cheat with Infernity is that people, some, <laughs> totally not me, would set monsters in their back row because in order to use a card like Infernity Launcher to special summon to Infernities from the grave, you had to have no cards in your hand. If you wanted to activate like Inferni other like Infernity monster effects, you had to have no cards in your hand. Uh, if you top deck Infernity Archfiend when you didn't have a hand, then the, that could almost instantly win you the game because then that could get you the launcher, which could get you two monsters, get you the barrier, whatever. And so what a lot of players would do, and you, maybe you've even seen memes of this online, where, you know, people will say like, oh, well, not just their monster zone, but their back row is extra monster zones because they can just set their monsters in the back row and then pop off. Um, so I was at locals. I was playing against a friend of mine, um, but he was playing Black Wings. I'm like, I really don't want to lose to fucking Black Wings today. So I set like an Infernity or two in my back row. I start popping off, making Mist Worms, bouncing shit back. And he's at like 100 life points, whatever. And he pops off with his Black Wings and breaks my board and swings for game. And I'm sitting there with my 14-year-old ass like, I just lost to Black Wings. And I didn't even deserve to build that board because I set monsters in my back row. <laughs> now, again, again, don't be hating on me. This guy that I was playing against was a good friend of mine. I was gonna planning on giving him the win anyway, most likely, I don't even remember, but it was a friend of mine. Like I wasn't trying to be mischievous, like 
we were all friends at this locals, but I was like so disappointed in myself. And Big Bruce 94, as I'm always shouting out in every video, he, uh, I think he called me like the next day because I was so embarrassed and disappointed in myself that I lost even after doing that. And he's like laughing his ass off on the phone. I'm like, bro, it's not funny. He's like, you're right, it's not funny because you cheated and you still lost. <laughs> I like to think that I've become a much better player since then, but I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, not only did we lose to Black Wings in 2010 when Infernity and X Sabres are the best decks of the format, but I got destroyed even after setting like a couple Infernities in my back row so I could use like my launcher or some shit. Now, there was one time where, again, still playing Infernities, I was actually at a uh, regional in Kissimmee where like all the Florida regionals are practically, or at least how they were back in the day. And I actually activated Infernity Launcher, not meaning to cheat, but I had a card in my hand. Now, I think that the way that this worked back in the day was that players could not intervene in other players' games. And there was a couple people watching. And I used the launcher, got out my Infernities and whatever. Um, and then after the match, I had won. That was like game three. And then one guy watching my game said... You, you couldn't activate Infernity Launcher. You you had a card in your hand. Well, he called it Gun because it's called Infernity Gun in the OCG, but you get what I mean. He's like, you you could, you can't activate Infernity Gun. You had a card in your hand. I'm like, no, I didn't. He's like, yeah, you did. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you had one card in your hand. It's right here. I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize that. I totally forgot that I had a card in my hand. And it was an honest mistake. And my opponent just didn't say anything. And at that point, the judge had already taken the match slip. So I don't know what the other guy was trying to fucking prove, but... I mean, I got the win and it was an honest mistake. And I even apologized to my opponent. I said, Hey, I activated the launcher. I, I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. And he just kind of shrugged his shoulders. And he's like, it is what it is. Um, so there are things like that too. Um, so please guys, let me know in the comments below. What, what, what do you think about cheating? What do you think really justifies it? Especially with something specifically like rulings where it's like, do you even tell the opponent about that ruling if it's the way that the card's supposed to function? So anyways, I don't know. Guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.